straight Big Ten road losses. To become bowl eligible today, they'll have to stop the nation's leading rusher, Garrett Wolf, and Northern Illinois. Kickoff in minutes. For now, back to Mike Gleason. And it all starts right now. Game one from Iowa City. Garrett Wolf in Northern Illinois against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Here's Clay Matvick and former LSU Tiger, Brian Kinchin. Guys. All right, thanks, Mike, and welcome to ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate. Today, the MAC and the Big Ten collide here in Iowa City. The Huskies of Northern Illinois and the slumping Iowa Hawkeyes. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City. Alongside my partner, Brian Kitchen, I'm Clay Matvick. You know, two weeks ago, Garrett Wolf was a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. But Western Michigan and Temple cooled his heels. Still, Iowa needs to be concerned with this little guy. Well, the question is, has the secret to stopping Garrett Wolf been revealed? The last two weeks, you'd think so. Only 70 yards running the football, which pale in comparison to his early season performances, putting up record numbers and captivating the country with his performance. So the question is, which Garrett Wolf do we see today? Which one shows up? And even more so, does the Hawkeye defense have anything to say about it? Well, the Iowa Hawkeyes have lost two straight games on the road in the Big Ten, and now they've also lost their starting quarterback, Drew Tate, to a hand injury. Well, the coaches had two choices at the start of this week. They had Jason Manson, the older five-year senior, who's more experienced. He knows the offense well. Or the young Jake Christensen, who's a freshman, unproven, and is not as experienced, but is the future of the Hawkeye offense. Which one was the right choice was the question earlier in the week but we have just found out they have solved that riddle and the young jake christensen the freshman will get the nod but don't be surprised clay if we see manson coming in if things don't go right early a great day for football here in the hawkeye state temperatures in the low 40s partly sunny skies some light winds at least down on the field this is the 22nd straight sellout here at kinnick stadium newly renovated this season $90 million went into this renovation. This place is absolutely beautiful. Last non-conference game for both teams this season. And as usual, Iowa will receive to start the football game. Iowa has started on offense in 80 of the last 88 games now. And uh, no change here today. I'm going to have a holder because of the swirling winds down on the field. I said the winds are uh, fairly light, but they're whipping down on the playing surface here today. And we're underway here in Iowa City as Chris Mendick sends it through the back of the end zone, and the Hawkeyes will start first down and 10 from the 20-yard line. And we talked a little bit about Drake Christensen, a redshirt freshman, and they are really high on this guy here. In Iowa City, six foot one, 205 pounds, out of Lockport, Illinois. He is a southpaw. And he is making his first college start today. So the lefty brings him up to the line for the first play of this football game. Albert Young back in the backfield. Good to see him back there for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's been banged up a little bit. And he's going to get the first carry of this contest. He's out over the 20. And it's going to be a short pickup, two yards. And again, Albert Young back in the backfield. Scott Chandler is one of the nation's best tight ends. He leads all Iowa receivers with four touchdowns. The Hawkeyes have battled a lot of injuries, and that includes the offensive line. But Mike Elgin, the right guard, he has been a constant for the Hawkeyes, and he is the leader up front. Second down, eight to go. First series of the football game. Send a man in motion. It's Andy Brodell. And the handoff again one more time. Albert Young plucks his way to the 25-yard line. Northern Illinois on defense. Right end, Larry English is the Huskies' best pass rusher. Ken West is the only senior up front. The linebackers, Keenan Blaylark, Tim McCarthy, and Corey Hansen. Blaylark is the team's leader in tackles. In the secondary, Utchik is the free safety and a captain. Hansbro has been a starter since 2003. So a third down and five. We'll see if the Hawkeyes can convert here on this first series. Just underway at Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City. Jake Christensen's going to throw for the first time. Goes over to the middle to his tight end. It's bobbled and picked off. Intercepted by Tim McCarthy, the middle linebacker. And a big break for the Northern Illinois Huskies here early in this football game. Their goal coming in was to create at least three turnovers in this contest, Brian. There's one. 
Well, they did not want to put Christensen in situations where he's going to have to throw the football. That's why we saw them run the ball early in the ball game. It was only about a third and six, a little bit of a high throw. Still, nonetheless, Chandler should come down with that throw, knowing that it's coming from the rookie, the young guy, and it might not be a perfect ball. So Phil Horvath and company take over. First down at 10 at the 35 of Iowa. They pass on first down. And it's going to be short of the first down. And the catch made by the tight end, Brandon Davis. Well, he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the country. He's completed 61% of his passes coming in. And when opponents try to shut down Garrett Wolf, Horvath takes advantage, as he did last week against Temple. 253 yards and two touchdowns through the air. Pickup of eight on that catch by Brandon Davis. Second down and two. Horvath turns, hands off to Garrett Wolf. He is nifty in the backfield. And he is going to be close to a first down. Horvath does a good job getting a lot of people involved in this offense of the receivers. Britt Davis would qualify as a go-to guy. On the offensive line, left tackle Doug Free hasn't missed a start in his career. He's got NFL written all over him. We're going to probably be talking about the tackle for the Huskies a lot here today. Picked up just a yard, so third down and one. Cobb getting behind the Hawkeyes, looking for a stop here on defense. Pitch back to Wolf, and he is going to be stopped in the backfield. Mike Humple, the outside linebacker, stepping up and making a big tackle. And then Iowa defense missing all Big Ten defensive end Kenny Owebama today, bothered by a shoulder injury. So Alex Canellis making his second straight start. The linebacking core, we just saw Humple, Klinkenborg, and Miles also back there. Klinkenborg, the top tackler. In the secondary, Marcus Pascal, one of the best free safeties in the country, yet he's been slowed by a bad hamstring. They're going to go for it on fourth down. It's fourth and three. They need to get to the 25. Horvath, quick drop throws. Had a receiver, but it was dropped by Britt Davis. And so the Hawkeyes hold after the turnover, and they'll get the ball back. 11.47 to go, opening quarter, still no score. SPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Back at Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City, Northern Illinois given a glorious opportunity early. They take possession at the 35 after the interception, but go four and out. They went for it on fourth down, and the Hawkeyes stoned it. So here's Jake Christensen, the pass on first down, looking for his big tight end, Scott Chandler. And they hook up out at the 34-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down, but Chandler is a good tight end, a senior out of South Lake, Texas, uh, the team's most consistent receiver. Well, I like to see this early. A tight end is a security blanket for any quarterback, especially a young quarterback. They've gone to him twice. Really good throw and even a better catch by Chandler, throwing, showing some finesse in some of his earlier wide receiver days. Second down and four. Christensen turns and hands off. This is going to be a first down for Albert Young. He led the Big Ten in rushing yards last year, but this year it has been tough for him. He missed the Purdue and Indiana games completely because of a sprained knee and played sparingly last week in Michigan, seven carries for 17 yards. But here, a fresh four for the Hawkeyes after the first down. We look at the keys to the game. Harbath has to be able to move the football down the field. Their defense for Northern Iowa has to take a risk. Young for Iowa needs to be able to move the football to relieve pressure off of Christensen and Wolf. They need to contain him. Iowa does, keeping him inside of the tackles. Dominique Douglas, the freshman wide receiver, lined up to the near side, but they go back to the ground. It's Young again. Gets out to midfield. And then Mark Ryder, the uh, strong safety for Northern Illinois, wraps him up. But it's a good pickup on first down for Young. Well, Clay, this is what we're going to see all day long. Albert Young back in this ballgame, his first start in a while. He is going to be the key. They will stick with him to neutralize this Northern Illinois defense and try to relieve pressure off of Christensen trying to make throws that he does not have to make. And, of course, on that first series, Christensen was intercepted. Been effective here so far in this series going on the ground. Herb Grigsby in motion. Now Christensen hands off again to his uh, junior running back, Albert Young. And he's got enough again for the first down. Tim McCarthy 
the middle linebacker knocks him down. But Young, just a solid tailback. He had eight 100-yard rushing games last year, including seven in a row, which was an Iowa record, but none this year. They think he might be able to get 100 yards here today. Well, he's their best every down back. Watching him last week, he was tiptoeing around a little bit versus Michigan, wasn't getting the ball downhill. We're seeing him do that today in this ball game. 345 yards on the ground coming into this game here today. Play action pass. Christensen coming to the near sideline, had a receiver wide open, hurt, hurt, hurt Grigsby, but it was out of his reach. A little bit strong from Jake Christensen, and certainly he's feeling some butterflies here today, Brian. Well, the touch throw, that's a very, very difficult throw for any quarterback. And then you take a young kid like Christensen who's put into a ball game trying to throw the ball, throws up the rainbow. Pretty good job, looked like a good throw, just a hair out of the reach of Grigsby on the play. Well, Christensen said he didn't treat this week any different than he has any week this season. He, he prepared the same way. But when he found out he was starting, you knew that he had to immediately start feeling butterflies. Five-step drop. Comes underneath to Young. Trying to use his defenders in front as a screen. Gets out over the 40-yard line to the 38. Mike Jones was the lead blocker, the left guard out in front of Young. But it's going to bring up third and about five. Well, that's a better, that's a better type of throw for him. A short screen. I love the screen. It does a great job of getting him confident. A couple of nice blocks here. Not as much out of it as they would have liked. But going back to the butterfly theory, every player feels butterflies. It's just a given. More so, obviously, when you haven't played. But once that game kicks off, even for a quarterback, they're gone and it's time to play football. Tom Bush, the fullback, is the lone setback behind Christensen. Here we got a third and five. Just over nine minutes to go in the first quarter, and Christensen backs away and calls a timeout. And this is something we may see here today, occasional confusion. All right, let's go to the studio, and Mike Gleason has a Sports Center U in-game update. Clay, Michigan scores first against Northwestern, the eighth time in nine games. The Wolverines put the first points on the board. Chad Henney. Adrian Arrington, this is Henny's 15th scoring strike. Michigan on top of the Cats, 7-0 in the big house. Clay? All right, Mike, thank you very much. Of course, Michigan trying to keep this unbeaten thing going. They want that meeting with Ohio State on November 18th in Columbus. As you take a look at the ESPNU All-State standings review, of course, the Buckeyes and Michigan both undefeated at 8-0. Everyone's looking ahead to a potential meeting of unbe unbeaten teams and uh, a great matchup in Columbus. Well, getting to watch Michigan when I was getting ready for this ball game, it was a lot of fun watching them. Chad Henney has so many weapons on offense, and he's so well protected. I'm sitting there thinking, what quarterback cannot perform well with all of that talent around him? I'm not taking away from hitting his ability. Obviously a good quarterback, but very, very comfortable with his surroundings. Easier for him to make or make bigger plays, not make as many mistakes. We get a look at Drew Tate on the sideline, had a thumb ligament pop loose in his non-throwing hand. Watch that happen in the Michigan game. It looked very, very painful. And they're gonna rest him for a week or two. Well, he underwent surgery on Tuesday. They think by this coming Tuesday, he can be back at practice. We'll have to wait and see. All right, Christensen on third down and five, looking to throw, has time, has the receiver, first down, Hawkeyes. Again, going back to that tight end. He's 6'7", 257. He is a big target out there, and 23 of his 33 catches now this season have gone for first down. Well, it looks like Chandler's gonna have a big day. He's gonna need to because if Christensen has to throw the football, he's the guy to go to. He's a big, giant target, came in as a wide receiver, got to know how to run routes really well. The only thing for him, he needs to develop his blocking skills just a little bit to take it into that next level at the NFL. Young in the backfield on first down. This is the eighth play of the drive. Young on the left side gets maybe a couple of yards on first down. Now, Sean Green, another tailback for Iowa, had surgery on Tuesday, the same day as Tate, to repair cartilage damage in his left knee. He's out a couple of weeks. This is a battered team physically and emotionally right now because of the loss to Indiana, which was a surprise to everyone, and then the loss last week to a very good Michigan team. Second down and eight. Iowa, with eight minutes to go here in the first quarter at the 26th of Northern Illinois. They're gonna go back to Young, he's got room to run. 
to the 15, to the 10, and escorted out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Dustin Utchick knocked him out at the 7. Well, looking at this play, this is what they're going to do. Utchick needs to step up and be seen a little bit earlier. He cannot be making tackles 15 yards down the field. Northern Illinois cannot play Iowa straight up. They will lose this ball game. They're going to have to take risk, and Utchick needs to step up and be heard at the line of scrimmage, not 15 yards down the field. We've talked a lot about Scott Chandler, the tight end, as a receiver today. The other tight end there, Tony Moriaki, threw a nice block on that last one. And he's leading the way this time again for Young. And he gets him into the end zone. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Albert Young with his fifth rushing touchdown of the season, and Iowa has the early lead. Well, I tell you, it's monumental. You go back to the interception that Northern Illinois had. Momentum is such a huge factor in this ball game. If they can take that and make points out of it, for especially a team like Northern Illinois, who is the underdog, they get on top and have momentum. On the other hand, they don't, and then Iowa drives it right down their throat to establish themselves in this game. Kyle Schlicker on for the extra point. Great kicker out of Ankeny, Iowa. It's 7-0 Hawkeyes. 7.46 to go in the opening quarter back in Iowa City after this timeout. A good start here for the Iowa Hawkeyes on their home field. 7-0 over Northern Illinois. It was a 10-play, 73-yard scoring drive. Took over four minutes. And Albert Young from seven yards out caps the drive. Well, we're going to see a lot of that. We look at Western Michigan did the same thing. They had time of possession almost twice as much as Northern Illinois. And what they did is they took their offense off the field, got Garrett Wolf out of the ball game, and ended up pulling out a victory. And so look at Marcus Perez. He averages about 23 yards per kick return. Back to return this kickoff from Schlicker. And Perez from inside the five comes back out to the 10, changes directions, good move to the 20, out to the 30 and met there and pulled down at the 32-yard line. Marcus Perez, dangerous back there on return team for Northern Illinois. Well, Iowa has been struggling on their kickoff coverage. They are eighth in the Big Ten, giving up 41.1 yard average on on a return this is not good something coach Ferentz is is obviously concerned about he's even taken some starters defensively and tried to plug them in to get that team working more efficiently second series offensively here for the Huskies Horvath under center turns and gives to Garrett Wolf tries to go to the right side and right into the teeth of that front four for the Iowa Hawkeyes there's a look at Kirk Ferentz in his eighth year as head coach here at Iowa and the first win he ever got as a head coach here in Iowa City was against this Northern Iowa team, uh, Northern Illinois team, excuse me. That's right, and the funny how he ended up here in Iowa, 25 years old, came to interview for this job, did not expect to get it, just wanted experience interviewing, ended up getting the job as an assistant. Horvath on second and nine, got it down at the line. Brian Madison. The left defensive end, he's a great pass rusher, and he got his big paw up there to knock that one down. Well, here's what Harbaugh has to be able to do, and it's not easy when you can't get the ball past the line of scrimmage. A great, great awareness right there by Madison, who had two sacks last week versus Michigan, had a really good day. Coaches were really pleased with his performance. It's nice to see him making a difference early, and he's going to have to do that all game long. They cannot let this ball get down the field and open up running lanes for Garrett Wolf. Very third and long situation for Northern Illinois. Go over the middle. Receiver had it and lost it. Slipped out of the hands of Marcus Perez. That would have been enough for a first down. That looks like a pass that needs to be caught. Yeah, you can't use your shoulder to catch a football. You've got to get your hands out there every night. And I'm out there with my kids working on catching the football. They want to use their body. It's just a natural instinct as a human being, but you've got to learn to be able to put the ball in your hands. Your hands are what makes it possible. Your shoulder pads are hard and stiff. Your hands are, are, are tender and they can move and caress the ball. <laughs> that's that's kind of that's gay, but hey, close. Fourth down Maybe. and nine. <laughs> 
Dick Venner's kick. And it's going to drop and take a roll for Northern Illinois. And uh, Northern Illinois with a good job there on punt team. Charles Godfrey covers. Iowa 7, Northern Illinois nothing. 6.31 to go here, first quarter. And Northern Illinois. Good job on that last punt as Iowa's looking at a fairly long field here at the 21-yard line. Albert Young in the backfield. Jake Christensen getting his first collegiate start here today under center. Tony Moriaki, the tight end. Christensen cocks and fires. Looking for Andy Brodell, and he's got it. Right in front of the Hawkeye bench, out by the 40-yard line. Mark Ryder there on defense, but it's going to be a big pickup, a first down. Well, Christensen does a great job. We saw this throw earlier in the ball game where he was trying to hit the corner route, had a little too much air under it. This time he has the boundary to protect him, and Brodell does a great job of going up and catching the ball at its highest point, using his hands to bring the ball in. What a great operation of throwing and catching. A 21-yard pickup on the catch by Brodell, who's putting together a nice sophomore season. Ball comes loose, and Northern Illinois has it. The second Hawkeye turnover here in the first quarter. Adriel Hansbro comes up with it as Young turns it over. Well, this is something they cannot do. You have to take care of the football. And we look at how that ball is being carried out there. It makes it a lot more higher risk in that case with a helmet getting on it because it's not protected by the body. And they get the good bounce. Illinois comes up with it. They had the turnover earlier, did not make anything happen. Can they do it in this occasion? Well, Bradley Pruitt actually recovered it. It was Hansbro who knocked it loose. Garrett Wolf on first down, a pickup of three on the carry. And it will bring up second down and seven. Well, Garrett Wolf up the middle. This is what Iowa needs to do. They got to keep him between the tackles. What they do when they do that is they shorten the field. They tighten the field down. He doesn't have as much room to operate. When you get him on the edge and give him a lot of field to work with, it's very, very difficult to contain young Garrett Wolf. And they wanted to force three turnovers in this game. That's actually their goal every game. There's a bad snap, bad busted play. There's a penalty, the penalty flags come in. This is going to be a false start on Northern Illinois. Snap. Start. Offense, number 60. That's a five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Steve Payman is our referee here today. So already two toward their goal today as far as creating turnovers, Brian. Well, they've got to get turnovers. This is a key for them because they've got to be able to make things happen. They can't play the Iowa straight up. They have to be able to convert these turnovers into points, though, Clay. That's the big key for Iowa. Or for Northern Illinois, I'm sorry. And another penalty flag comes in. Again, it's going to be false start on Northern Illinois. And boy, this offense, Brian, having trouble getting traction. Offense, number 62. That's a five-yard five-yard. It's been made second down. Now, we talked with Joe Novak, the head coach for the Huskies this week, and we talked about the environment here at Kinnick Stadium. 70,000 Iowa fans on top of you. But he said, you know, that's not going to be a distraction for our guys. After all, we did play in Columbus first game of the season at Ohio State. He said his kids are used to big arenas. He did say against Ohio State because of such young kids it was a little more difficult but they should be able to handle this situation today so far struggling a little bit out of the game here's Garrett Wolf he's trying to get loose and he's had a difficult time as that Iowa defense strings him out again to the near sideline it's Brian Madison the first one there well we're watching Garrett Wolf against Western Michigan they're doing exactly what Iowa needs to do which is keep him inside do not let him get going if he gets going he's very very dangerous and if they can keep him in the tackles in the backfield between the tackles he's very very ineffective as he has been the last two ball games the last four games especially those last two his numbers have slowed way down receiver wide open nice catch by Matt Simon coming back for the football 
And he's going to be still well short of the first down. He needed to get out to midfield, so it's going to bring up fourth down and five. And we're going to see the punt unit come on here for the Huskies. So Northern Illinois now 0 for 3 on third down conversion attempts. And we're going to get a look at Dominique Douglas, the return guy for Iowa, having quite a freshman season, a true freshman. Has done a great job as a receiver this year. And averaging 13 yards per return on the punt return team. The kick from Dick Benner. And Douglas is going to take it at the eight. No, he dropped it. It's loose. Iowa has recovered. Wow. And almost another turnover for the Hawkeyes, but Justin Edwards got down there to help Dominique Douglas out. What's going on with this Iowa team here early on? Well, this is just not Kirk Ferentz type football team characteristics. It's just not. Putting the ball on the ground is not something they do. This is a fundamental of football, whether it's a punt returner, a wide receiver, a running back. You just do not let the football out of your hands. So a long field again here for the Hawkeyes. First down and 10. Christensen under center. He's got Albert Young in the backfield. He's standing a yard deep in his own end zone. He's going to get it. And what pressure immediately coming in from that front four and from the edges for Northern Illinois. It's a loss on the play. Let's go to the studio to Mike Gleason. We have a touchdown in Camp Randall, but it's not Wisconsin. Check out Illinois' Trevon Bellamy. Nice job here by Bellamy. Breaking on the ball, catch the ball in his hands, and he knows what to do with it. He's an ex-running back in high school. Only the fourth pick for Stocko, but third in his last four games. 7-0 Illinois, Clay. So Illinois looking for the upset. Wisconsin a pretty good one-loss football team. So you take a look at the Iowa play selection here. Very balanced. 10 rushing, 10 passing. Had better luck on the ground, of course, with the young quarterback in there. We're going to see a lot of running plays. However, they're going to go to the air here on play action. Christensen going deep downfield, has a receiver, and it is caught at the 49. What a beautiful catch for Trey Strauss, the redshirt freshman out of Avon Lake, Ohio. Just his eighth catch this year, and that one is a long one. And a first down for the Hawkeyes. What a great play. This ball is laid up there like a beautiful punt. And you talk about touch. That is as good as it gets to be able to lay the ball down the center of the field and to come up with it. What a grab by Trey Strauss to be able to bring that in, to reel in that three-second hang time on that throw. 47-yard play. we go back to Young. This is going to be a loss of a yard. Strauss has played in all nine games this year. Another youngster on this Hawkeye team. So it's redshirt freshman to redshirt freshman on that 47-yard hookup. Well, that's just something that you just don't expect to see, Clay. A young quarterback to be able We did not expect that coming into this ballgame, to see him be able to put that football down the field like that with such touch. So beautiful. It's like poetry. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. The Hawkeyes with the lead and the football at midfield. Christensen again on play action. The southpaw comes underneath to Young. Shakes loose. He's to the 45 and steps out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. Mike Jones leading the way again out in front of Young. Well, the screen complements the long ball so well because once you've proven to them that you can get down the football field, the screen underneath, the draw, when you give them the deception of they're going to go back and throw the football and then dump it underneath or hand it off to a running back as we get a good look at Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. Great call, great way to set up that screen. Iowa, one of two on third down conversion attempts here today. On third down, they go back to Young, and he's got enough for the first down. Mark Ryder, the strong safety, steps up to bring him down. Well, it's you can a see new set of downs for the Hawkeyes. You can see why they missed him so much. Look at his presence, his vision of being able to stop, redirect right up the center of the defense, and get the six or seven extra yards. He's a patient runner, just a good every down back. Is, is can do it all. Can pass block, can run block, and run the football very, very effectively. They send Tony Moyaki in motion, and they go back to Young. 
Trying to get behind that tight end. Good shot over the 35-yard line. He's going to be yanked down at the 33. And, and Robert Arusha in on the stop. And I like what Northern did earlier. They were bringing pressure on the running game to try to shut them down because they've got to be able to do something a little bit different. So Northern Illinois has uh, gotten some breaks in this game, but they trail 7-0. Second quarter coming up here on ESPNU. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Ready to go here in the second quarter. The Hawkeyes have a touchdown advantage. It's a cool but very comfortable day for football here in Iowa City. 22nd straight sellout crowd here at Kinnick Stadium. On second down and seven, the redshirt freshman Jake Christensen. Looks like he's starting to heat up, Brian. He hits Andy Brodell there for the first down. Obviously and understandably very jittery to start the game, but it looks like he's cooling down. Well, we see why the coaches like him. It's hard to predict how a young kid is going to play in a ball game when he hasn't had any experience. And I asked Coach Ken O'Keefe last or yesterday about that, and you just never know with kids. But he had a pretty good feel about him. That's why we thought that he would get the start today, and he's showing us why they have confidence in his abilities. He had thrown just three passes this season before this game, and he completed all of them for a total of 19 yards. But that was in mop-up duty against Montana in the season opener. This is... Quite a different thing, and there completes a pass, and then it's dropped by Scott Chandler. Chandler had it, and then he came down and dropped it. Well, Chandler's had a couple of drops today. Those throws weren't perfect, but still needs to bring them in. He had a good one-handed grab earlier. Really showed his skills, but I'm sure he's loving the fact that Christensen is in the ball game because he is filling up his bucket. So second down and 10. Ball at the 25-yard line of Northern Illinois. Albert Young with the lone touchdown in this football game. He's the lone setback. He's going to get it here. Goes over the left side and battles his way to the 21-yard line. Dustin Utchick, the free safety, stepping up to pull him down to the turf. He's one of the captains on this football team. And that pretty much says it all about Utchick. Great communicator. He's an overachiever, and there are a lot of those on this Northern Illinois team. Well, we talked about it yesterday with the coaches. We were trying to get a little definition between the two, all the players. He said, Brian, we're just a bunch of overachievers. That's just what we are. We're a little bit undersized, not as fast. We have to play good, solid football across the board to win ball games. Another long series for Iowa. It's the 10th play of the drive. This is to the corner of the end zone. The receiver coming back for it, but Bradley Pruitt, great coverage there, and Trey Strauss couldn't haul it in. Crowd here wanting a flag, but I thought that was pretty good coverage on uh, Pruitt's part. Well, we saw how much air Christensen put under the ball earlier, which is good. But in this situation, you need to be a little bit more precise. Throw the ball with a little more of a line on it as opposed to air time. And no matter how well their coverage was, you could still fit the ball in there, but not when you lay it up high like a log. 38-yard attempt here for Kyle Schlicker. 10 of 13 this year with a long of 45, and that one is right between the eyes. And the Hawkeyes have a 10 0 lead. 13 36 to go here, first half. Only Hayden Fry has more wins in Iowa history than that guy, Kirk Ferentz. He's taken the Hawkeyes to four straight January bowl games, and he's hoping to get bowl eligible here today with a win over Northern Illinois. And so far, so good as he's gone with his redshirt freshman today and led them down to a field goal, an 11 play, 73 yard drive. Uh, what would you grade young Christensen out here today so far? I give him an A for being a freshman. I think that the coaches probably not so much so they knew what he was capable of coming into this ball game. But me not having seen him and seeing how well he's performed, he's just done a fantastic job. I don't think they could have asked more out of him. And granted, playing a team like Northern Illinois, there's not as much expectation. And he hasn't had to be that great with the football because Albert Young has ran the ball well today. 
It was just enough wind down there to keep knocking the football over. So Flicker asks for a holder. Look at the flags hanging from the goalpost. They're hardly moving, but down in the field, that wind is whipping around. As you take a look at Jake Christensen. Marcus Perez and Melvin Rice back deep for Northern Illinois. It's going to be Perez. And he's going to think better of it. Let's go to the studio with Mike Gleason. Play number seven, Auburn on the road. They trail. Check out the bottom of your screen, the receiver for Ole Miss. Like I like his call. You got an aggressive Auburn defense. You get him over pursue and run the reverse for big play. That's Miko McSwain taken to the house. 7 0 Ole Miss. Notre Dame Navy. Navy hasn't beaten the Irish since 1963. And this is David Grimes. Now watch the adjustment on the football. And he takes it in for the score. Notre Dame on top, 10-0 over Navy. Clay? All right, Mike, thank you very much. A lot of people have been saying about that Auburn team that, you know, they haven't deserved the high ranking that they've gotten. Yeah. And, uh, interesting to see if uh, Ole Miss can pull an upset here today. It's a pickup of three yards on that carry. Well, there's been so much in the SEC parity just teams getting beat that you would not expect Arkansas Arkansas playing well this year taking out some teams it's just hard to really put your finger on who's the best team in the SEC right now Garrett Wolf in Northern Illinois down 10 play action Horvath rolls to his left comes underneath this is tight end Brandon Davis, the sure-handed receiver, the brother of wide receiver Britt Davis, but quickly wrapped up by the real linebacker Edmund Miles. And it's going to bring up third down and long. You watch Brandon Davis, big tight end. He's only 6'4", compared to his counterpart on the other side, who's 6'7", but a very, very athletic young man. He's learning how to block, getting better, being well-rounded. We take a look at his brother Britt Davis. They are brothers. Very, very close on the same field at the same time. That's special. Northern Illinois yet to pick up a first down in this football game, but it looks like they have one now. Horvath complete. Charles Godfrey quickly wrapping up Marcus Perez, but he's got enough for the first down. And for the first time today, Northern Illinois' offense able to move the chains. Well, Perez, another guy they really like, very, very sure-handed receiver. He was academically ineligible last year, did not get any playing time. He's only a sophomore, really his first year of playing college football. It's been a while since he's even played high school football. Horvath directing traffic out there, sends Greg Turner back to the right. Play action. Deep downfield. In and out of the hands of Britt Davis. Davis had it, couldn't bring it back into his body. Well, if anybody's going to come up with it, it's going to be Britt Davis. This guy is their best wide receiver. He's their go-to guy, the guy that Harvath feels most comfortable with. He was a quarterback in high school. They called him the king of the spread because he ran the spread offense and ran it really well. Very athletic, a dynamic player who makes a valiant effort, just comes up a little short with and, the football. And Miguel Merrick, one of the standout players in the Iowa secondary, was running step for step with him. Garrett Wolf. He's a water bug, but unable to find much daylight here today. That Iowa defense is quick to spot him, and it's not easy. I mean, he's 5'7", so he's built low to the ground. He's easy to hide behind that front line. Well, but Iowa's doing a good job of picking him up. We talked about his last two weeks and his struggles of getting the football down the field and really kind of gotten off of the watch list for the Heisman, and it's affected him a little bit of not being as in that limelight anymore, even though that is affecting it as well. Another third down conversion attempt. They go back for Perez. He is short of the 40-yard line and about three yards short of the first down. Again, Godfrey, the right cornerback, coming up and pulling him down. Well, going back to Garrett Wolf, being in the limelight, being in the Heisman race requires a lot of time and effort on his part, a lot of interviews. Joe Novak talked about how it has affected him a little bit, and he's grown a little bit wearisome of it, and it just happened to coincide with the fact that he's not really having to deal with it as much because of his last two game performances. Dominique Douglas standing at his own 20 yard line to return this kick. The kick from Dick Benner is a good one. Douglas to the 25, escapes a tackle, spun down at the 30 yard line. What a 10 yard return for Dominique Douglas. 
Ryan Morris in on the stop. Full day of college football continues on ESPNU at 3.30 Eastern. North Carolina State bragging rights on the line as the Wake Forest team and Deacons try to build on a great start to the season as they take on the Tar Heels. College football presented by Allstate on ESPNU. And then coming up tonight, it's going to be a good one. Arkansas, Louisiana, Monroe. That's it, Monroe. And then the 65th Magic City Classic as well. That's always fun. Damian Sims getting his first carry of the day here for Iowa. No gain on the play. It's been basically Young and Sims in the backfield here the last couple of weeks, but mostly Sims because Young's been battered up. But uh, both should get a lot of carries here today and going to try and balance the workload out a little bit. Well, a guy that we really have not heard a lot of is Dominique Douglas, the freshman receiver who has been having a fantastic year. He competes, he catches well. They have not gotten into football today. We need to watch them to see if they can do that. They need to do that to be more effective throwing the football. After the loss of one, second down and 11, they go back to Damian Sims. He's out to the 35 and close to the first down at the 40-yard line before he's tackled by Bradley Pruitt. Sims has been very impressive here uh, when he's been filling in for Albert Young. And he gets a first down. Well, Sims got his first start against Purdue, had 155 yards in that ball game. I was here to be able to witness that very dynamic runner. He's not as versatile as Albert Young, but did a great job in filling in. Last week versus Michigan, though, only had seven carries for 22 yards. Not exactly earth-shattering. Actually, it's just short. The nose of the football resting just shy of the 40-yard line. To get a half yard. They go back to Sims. He's got enough for the first down now, trying to shake loose into the secondary. And he's pulled down at the 45-yard line, so they'll move the chains. Damian Sims, the team's leading rusher, picks it up. Well, Sims, you talk about presence and awareness. We, we look at Garrett Wolf and the skills that he has. He's saying, you know what? I've got some myself. We see him spinning and ma missing, making people, people miss and being very effective. A good go-to guy to relieve Albert Young, who's probably not as in, as in good a shape as he would be had he not got injured. Sims was a defensive back for part of last season, but the Hawkeyes like him where he's at now at tailback. Christensen under trouble. Gets uh, out of the pocket and steps out of bounds. Tim McCarthy chased him out, but he does get into Northern Illinois territory. It's going to bring up second down and three. It's funny, though, when, you, when I see him running with that ball in his left hand, who does that remind you of? It's like the only left-handed guy you think of when you see that. It's Steve Young. Steve Young, so prolific, left-handed passer, very, very familiar, very elusive, but not great feet, not great feet, but can get out of trouble using his feet and being smart by not making the bad throw down the football field. Well, many are calling Christensen the uh, Hawkeye quarterback of the future. We're back to Sims. And he's wrapped up quickly, but he may have enough for a first down. Sims not getting the start today. Started the last three games while Young was out with that sprained knee. Well, I talked about as one of the keys, Northern Illinois is going to have to do things differently. They're going to have to take chances. They haven't really done that. We get a shot of Larry English, number 51, who has been a very, very dynamic player. Has eight sacks on the year. Had four and a half versus Temple. The guy can make a difference. He's their most athletic player, but he's not been heard from today. High backfield, two receiver set. Christensen going back to Sims. And a first down, maybe a gain of one. Let's go to Mike Leeson for a Sports Center U in-game update. Clay, plenty of time left up in Camp Randall, but nonetheless, interesting things happening. We got a linebacker here trying to cover running back coming out of the backfield. Easy touchdown for Atlanta. Juice Williams of Pierre Thomas in Illinois on top of the Badgers in Madison, 14-3. What an upset that would be. When you talk about Juice, we were there when they gave Juice his shot yep. against Syracuse. He's done really, really well since then. Christensen boxes on and hits Scott Chandler. First down for the Hawkeyes. The older brother, Nathan, was a Hawkeye quarterback a few years ago. Scott Chandler came to Iowa 
as a wide receiver, and they think that's why he is such a great receiving tight end. Well, he does a fantastic job. He's such a big, huge target. 6'7". The guy has got all of the physical skills. He just needs to develop, as I talked about earlier, as a little bit better blocker and having a, a little better presence and awareness of the system that he's in. Ference thinks he's going to be a first-day selection in the NFL draft. This time Chandler leaves it on the ground to bring up second and ten. Well, we watch a ball like that, you know, and it's easy to say, man, he should have caught that. But you got to factor in all of the equations. He is very, very tired. He's Second running a lot of routes. He's catching a lot of footballs, and he's winded. And it's harder to stay focused and concentrated when you're winded. Not that I need to make excuses for this guy, but those are catches he needs to bring in. And I think you would agree with that as yeah. well. In his defense, it was a little bit behind him, but it hit him in the hands. Right. Second down and 10. Tom Bush in the backfield with Damian Sims. Sims straight ahead to the 30. Spins at the 25 and driven down there by Dustin Utchin. A senior free safety. That's the thing about Sims, he's got some nice moves. Well, he, he's, he's doing so many spin moves. I'm getting dizzy up here watching him. But it's very, very impressive. That's not all running football is not all about straight ahead not just getting yardage You have to be original you have to be able to have vision and be able to find ways to elude blockers And he's very very effective at it. The Hawkeyes have had better success on third down In Northern Illinois here today three for five so far today Christensen rolling out to his left had a man and it was dropped Tony Moliaki Couldn't hang on to a sure first down And it's gonna bring up either a long field goal situation or maybe we'll see Iowa go for it on fourth and three. Well, I can tell you what, if Christensen was not a freshman, if he was anything but and had a few starts under his belt, I guarantee you he'd be in the face of those wide receivers and say, guys, come on, what are you doing to me here? He's throwing a lot of good throws, not all of them perfect, mind you, but still they're hitting hands and they're being dropped. He would have incredible numbers had all those balls been hauled in, but that's a fact of very inexperienced wide receivers. You have to deal with that. This is a big play for the redshirt freshman. A fourth down and three. He's going to keep it. And he's going to be close to the first down. I believe he got it. Yes, indeed he did. Tim McCarthy with the shoestring tackle, but not before Jake Christensen shows a lot of savvy and picks up the first down. Well, they've done such a great job of showing confidence in his arm and throwing the football that it sets this play up absolutely perfect. And you got to give credit to Ken O'Keefe, their offensive coordinator, for calling it. It's a very gutsy call to go for it on fourth down and to run the quarterback draw. Damian Sims, short pickup on first down, second down and six. All right, let's go to Mike Gleason in studio. Well, Clay, the Auburn Tigers on the road. We told you they were down 7-0. Brandon Cox finally started throwing the football last week. Here he goes upstairs for his ninth touchdown pass. Like when you establish that running game like Auburn does, then that play-action pass is very effective. So 7-7 Auburn Ole Miss and the Oklahoma Sooners, Missouri. It's 14-3. Sooners on the road at Missouri. Clay? Mizzou out to uh, such a great start this year. Still 7-1 and one on the year. On second down, and they call it 7. Christensen in trouble, and he is sacked at the 25-yard line by the cornerback, Adriel Hansborough. And Northern Illinois said that they were going to try and put as much pressure on Christensen as they can. Here they send the corner in on the blitz, and they get to him. Well, this is what I've been talking about. They've got to be able to get pressure on him. They've been letting him sit back and pick their defensive backfield apart. And with that big front line, they're going to have protection all day, and they're going to have to bring it, as Hansbro did a great job of getting in there. And you got to make the play once you're there. It's not that easy, but he did a great job. This is the 14th play of this drive. Third down and 15. Christensen looking to go to the air. Now he's going to run. He's back to the 20-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. Well, we had talked about it, about a left-handed quarterback. His right side being vulnerable. Where do you think they brought pressure from? Play. That side. The right side. Yep. Yes. Ken West making the tackle, and we are going to see a field goal attempt for Schlicker. 
Hooker already with a 38-yarder in his pocket. This is from 37. From the right hash, no good. A little bit to the right. And Northern Illinois is breathing a sigh of relief. They're still only down 10 with 319 to go here in the first half. Anyway. 3.19 to go here before half. And Iowa on top of Northern Illinois, 10-0. The last non-conference game of the season for both sides. And the NCAA approved a 12th game last year. And Iowa added Northern Illinois to its schedule next year. These two teams will meet at Soldier Field. And that's good news. The bad news is uh, for Iowa this year, this was supposed to be their bye week, and as beat up as they are, they could have used a day off. They go to Garrett Wolf on first down, and it's been a tough day for the Heisman Trophy candidate. Well, log on to your new online source for all things college sports at ESPNU.com. This online gateway will connect you to all college sports content from ESPN, combining the latest news with an expanded collection of the new exclusive material, scores, columns, video, and audio highlights. You heard. Log on to ESPNU.com today. We are college sports. So second down and 10 for Northern Illinois. Down 10. Horvath turns, looks for Wolf, nowhere to run. Tries to string it out and get around the corner. Can't do it. Klinkenborg and Humpel are there. And Garrett Wolf is seeing what he's seen the last two weeks. Well, this looks very eerily similar to the last couple of ball games, especially versus West, Western Michigan. He, they would just turn around and hand the ball to him continually, continually without any success. And on this situation, they need points out of this drive right here to have any chance of winning this ball game. They cannot go into the locker room 10 points down. Well, if the first five weeks of the season was on fire, rushed for almost 1,200 yards, including 171 against Ohio State. But the last four or so games have been different still. Horvath steps up, throws, intercepted. Picked off by Pascal. Pascal missed a couple of games this season because of injury, but healthy now. And he has Iowa back with the football and in great field position. Well, here's a guy that they have missed. He gets his first start today in a while after having a hamstring problem the last few weeks, making his presence felt. This kid not only does a great job in the pass defense, but is a very, very good presence in the run, def run defense of hitting people, liking to be in the mix of things. With the total yards of offense, 240 for Iowa. And looking for more. Christensen flushed out of the pocket. Goes to Dominique Douglas. Has it on the left side. It's going to be a good pickup, maybe about six or seven yards on first down. Utschick on the tackle. But Douglas, the only true freshman who has started on a regular basis for the Hawkeyes, and he has set all kinds of Iowa records for a true freshman receiver. 29 catches for 436 coming in. Leads all true freshman receivers in the country in receptions. And a pass again to Douglas. Got a first down and more. Tiptoeing along the far sideline. Steps out of bounds inside the 20. Well, Douglas and Chandler were going to be the guys that I felt like Christensen would go to to feel comfortable with. He got to Chandler earlier in the ball game, and now he's getting the ball to Douglas, who's a very dynamic receiver and does a great job of tiptoeing down the boundary and getting extra yards. Looks like Kirk, Kirk Ferentz and Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, are looking to get more points before halftime. Ferentz has been extra impressed by Douglas's toughness. Didn't know he was going to be such a tough guy. But he takes a lot of pounding, too. Very durable. Christensen throws to the receiver. This time it's Grigsby inside the 10-yard line. And the Hawkeyes back in the red zone, banging on the door here with under a minute to go in the first half. I'm telling you what, they have got to be pleased with the presence of this young man. He's doing a fantastic job, not just offensively, but also in this hurry-up offense of moving the football down the field. That takes a lot of maturity, and he's showing it for such a youngster. Gets the first down on that keeper. And now it's goal to go. First and 10, first and goal. For the 37 Hawkeyes seconds to go Illinois before six. half. Christensen shouting out some instructions here. Working out of the shotgun. Lobbed to the end zone, looking for Douglas. Reaches out incomplete. 
hands throw on the coverage. The fans down there in the corner, especially the student section, want a penalty flag, none coming. Well, hey, that's just playing good football. That's a part of it. You're not going to get that call every single time. And yeah, his hands are on his shoulder pads, but you know what? You get away with it in football, just like I can remember as a blocker and those guys down front. They grab you. They just don't always get caught. Hansborough, the best cover guy in the secondary for Northern Illinois. And there's an example of that right there. Second down and goal. 24 seconds to go. Play clock down to six. Christensen throws to the end zone. Reaching up. Touchdown, Douglas. He does not look like a true freshman. Neither the quarterback or the receiver on that play, for that matter. And it's 16-0 Hawkeyes. Well, we had talked about getting him involved a couple of series before this, and we see why he needed to get involved. He's a dynamic receiver, catches the ball so well, and what presence for such a young kid to know where the end zone is, to reach the ball out and get the points. Slicker on for the extra point. Coming off a missed field goal, bangs this one through, and it's 17-0. Douglas last week had six catches in the big house. He's a Detroit native. Man, he's growing up fast here with the Hawkeyes. He's got the touchdown. It's 17-0 Iowa. Freshman Dominique Douglas making it 17-0 Hawkeyes. 18 seconds to go before the half. And coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report is that Michigan offense struggling today. Northwestern. Michigan a game here today and the Illini has some juice of course the quarterback juice Williams we'll talk about him and an ACC preview all coming up on the halftime report Melvin Rice and Marcus Perez back for Northern Illinois kick from Schlicker is short and return out to the 25 to the 30 yard line and driven out as Perez at the 32 11 seconds to go for Horvath and company. And it's been a tough first half for Garrett Wolf. Well, his struggles continue. Over the last couple of games, only 70 yards running the football. 45 two weeks ago, 25 last week. And we're not even going to get a play here before half. Northern Illinois is content down 17. So Iowa should feel good about that first half. A good first half for that guy, Jake Christensen. They've got a 17-point lead at the break. Let's go to Mike Gleason and John Cooper with SportsCenter U Halftime Report. All right, thanks a lot, Clay. You know, Brian Kinchin talking about Christensen doing a nice job of managing the game. But on the defensive side, you know, Garrett Wolf has nowhere to go. Yeah, Garrett Wolf had over 108, he had 185 yards rushing against Ohio State. So put that in perspective, this Iowa defense has played a great first half. All right, Garrett Wolf right now unofficially 11 yards uh, in Iowa City. Now, coming up. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate and Iowa on top of Northern Illinois 17 to nothing. As we get ready for the third quarter, we take a look at the first half highlights. And tell you what, Brian, Northern Illinois had some opportunities early, couldn't take advantage of them. Well, they sure did. They had the interception there, and Garrett Wolf. Seems to be operating very similar to the way that he has in the last two weeks. The young quarterback Christensen has done a good job of spreading the ball around. And Albert Young in his first start back is being very effective. And even Darian Sims, his backup, is doing a very, very good job as well. And the young Dominique Douglas just looking so, so nice there. Return route and scoring on the touchdown. And look at the stats. They are very, very much in Iowa's favor. And Garrett Wolf in that first half, nine carries, just 10 yards on the ground. Iowa did not punt at all in that first half. And Northern Illinois able to just pick up one first down. And I'm sure Joe Novak a little disappointed with his team's effort here today. But this is a very good Iowa football team. And he knew that coming in. Well, they really are. And watching them against Michigan, if you take away a few fumbles and a few missed opportunities and they go the other way, they can, they can beat Michigan. They are a very, very comparable team. They're physical up front, very, very tough. And for Northern Illinois, they had to come in and play pretty mistake-free football, and obviously they haven't been able to do that very well today. Northern Illinois is going to have the football here to start the second half. Schlipper kicks, 
And it is Marcus Perez who will bring this out from a yard deep. Coming to the near sideline, trying to get back to the 10-yard line, and he's driven down and hit hard. Well, we talked about the keys early on about Harbath being able to put the ball down the field. Has not been able to do that. The defense has taken some risks for Northern Illinois, but not been very effective in slowing down Iowa's offense. Young has been effective running the football, and they have to continue to harp on these things to get these things done, especially Northern Illinois. They can't dig themselves in any more of a hole than they already are. Horvath in the first half, 5 for 10, just 33 yards passing, and he was picked off once. Here he's complete on his first pass attempt of the first half, and it's to his tight end, Brandon Davis. Godfrey quick to make the stop. Well, just as we talked about with Christensen on the other side of the football of being able to get it to his tight end, it's the same here with Harbath being able to get it to his tight end, his security blanket. Now listen to this hit, this pop. Yes. Now that's football, helmet to helmet. It's not great, but... Sounded really fantastic. Godfrey, the uh, third leading tackler on the team for Iowa. Here is Wolf trying to shake loose and does enough for the first down out over the 20-yard line before Edmund Miles is there. Wolf in that first half, as I mentioned, just 10 yards on the ground. And uh, he's a big play guy. 11 runs this year have gone for 25 yards or more, but the last three games... Defensives, defenses have been able to figure him out. Well, he was down the left side, right behind big Doug Free. We get a shot of him, their big left tackle. Pass complete to Britt Davis, a former quarterback and the Huskies' leading receiver. And uh, it's actually uh, dropped for Davis. And you're going to see it slip out. It looked like he had it for a while, but then it comes right out. Well, it was a very, very tight throw. He put it right on his hip. Did a good job of placement. Just could not hang on to the football in traffic. Horvath goes to him quite a bit. Second down and 10 here. Wolf. Room to run. Now heads toward the sideline. Charles Godfrey again there. And it's going to bring up third and about six. Well, it, it just does not look like Garrett Wolf is running very inspired. Even watching him over the last couple of weeks, it just seems like he's he's plotting and he's thinking too much, trying to find gaps. And, it, and, and you've really just got to go in and take what you've got sometimes because I know he's a dynamic runner and can make things happen. But sometimes you just got to take what you can get and leave it at that. Northern Illinois on third down today, just one for six. Horvath, five-step drop over the middle and in the coverage, looking for Brandon Davis, but Pasco and a bunch of black jerseys there to knock it down. Well, you've you got to love his emotion. It's something that has been missing in this Iowa defense in his absence. Pascal does just does a great job. He's their free safety, but he's one of those guys that likes to hit. Not a lot of free safeties like to do that. They like to sit back and play more of a finesse game. But he's almost like a strong safety in the sense where he likes to mix it up. And you see that emotion in him coming out on the football field. Dominique Douglas back at the 35-yard line. He had a great first half, especially as a receiver caught his touchdown there in the first half. This is shanked. Man, it's been a, a tough day for Northern Illinois. The problems continue. 13, 20 to 2 to go here in the third quarter. 17 0 Iowa. 70,000 people on hand here at Kinnick Stadium. Here in Iowa City. Alongside former LSU tight end Brian Kitchen, I'm Clay Matvick. Glad to have you along here today. Iowa in their home black, Northern Illinois in white. And after a 16-yard punt by the punter did better, Iowa's going to be working with a short field. They've got it first down and 10 at the 41-yard line. It's been a good college starting debut for Jake Christensen, the quarterback under center now. And on first down goes back to the running game. It's Albert Young picks his way for about five or six yards on first down. Utchik steps up to make the stop. And you take a look at the numbers for Christensen here today, the redshirt freshman out of Lockport, Illinois. First college start, and he's been very good. Well, he's been very, very efficient with his throws. 
and the interception even. It was a tipped ball off of the, of off of the tight end Chandler's hands, but still nonetheless, can we look, get a look at Tate, who's got his thumb bandaged up quite a bit. Hopefully he'll be back within a couple weeks, but I know they're happy with the young man's performance today. Very comfortable. Albert Young changing Albert directions. Young it's going to be about two yards. It's going to bring up third down and maybe three. And I was talking to Coach Ferentz yesterday about his injury. I had a very similar injury to my thumb where the ligament popped off. It wasn't very painful, but they said, you know what, Brian, you got to go in and get it fixed. And I was like, but why? It's, it seems okay. But well, you have to have that ligament in right. place for that thumb to operate properly. Well, Ferentz told us yesterday that if the doctors weren't afraid that the incision would develop an infection, Tate would probably be out there. Well, I'm he's, sure he's got he had, that kind of heart. Oh, yeah. If he's had it his way, he'd be out there lined up no matter what. Third down and three. They pass, and it's incomplete. And we're again looking for Douglas Bradley Pruitt in on the coverage. Well, we got to go back to, to two, though. Another dropped ball. That's That was right in the, the midsection. Very, very catchable football. But he's had a few of those today. Now, all of them haven't been perfect, but he's thrown the ball very, very accurately. Very, very impressed. So they are going to go for it again. You got to like that. Yeah, they converted in the first half and Christensen kept. It was also on a fourth down and three at about the same point on the field. They're at the 35 yard line. Play clock running down. It's down to three. Christensen trying to draw Northern Illinois offside. It doesn't work. Well, that's an old trick they try. At every level of football, trying to run up to the line of scrimmage and make them think they're going to snap and get the easy five yards. The disciplined Northern Illinois team was not going for that, and it would not happen. Here's Christensen trying to get that Northern Illinois defensive front four to jump offside. It doesn't happen. So Perez back to return this punt from Andy Fenstermaker, the first punt of the day for Fenstermaker. It takes a Northern Illinois roll out to the 11-yard line, but still, it's going to be a long field for the Huskies. Well, a full day of college football continues on ESPNU at 3.30 Eastern North Carolina State. The bragging rights are on the line as Wake Forest has to build on a great start. Taking on the Tar Heels. It's been a tough season for North Carolina. John Bunting is not going to be coming back. And then coming up tonight, Arkansas and Louisiana Monroe at 7. And then at 10, Alabama State and Alabama A&M. It's the 65th Magic City Classic. First down and 10 for the Huskies. They're down 17. They go to Garrett Wolf. Wow. They have... Uh, been able to find him no matter where he goes. It's almost like he's got a light above his head saying, hey, here I am, and the hot guys are on him right away. Well, I knew it was going to be very difficult for him because watching Iowa's defense, they're so disciplined in everything they do in their running lanes, their passing lanes, and it's just hard when you have people that know their responsibilities to be able to pick apart a defense like that. His most impressive day came last month against Ball State. He went off for 353. This is 10 yards in the first half today. Horvath in trouble, throws it short. And to the near sideline where Britt Davis comes back for it. Godfrey is quick to come on top of him. And he's going to be well short of the first down, third and about four. Well, I think it, this the last few weeks of that watching them without Mary. Garrett Wolf being able to be effective. They just football. are not the same ball club. They're not the same offense. It's almost like they just become average. And they're uninspired, and, and Garrett just seems a little lost. He does not know what to do. He cannot find his way like he has so early in this season. It's been a tough day on third down for Northern Illinois. Only one of, of seven times have they been able to convert. Horvath to Wolf. And he is clothesline at the 15-yard line by Marcus Paxton. Well, you just keep waiting for him to break one out. You know, it's Garrett Wolf. It was the first game I ever called last year. And he did such a great job of finding holes and creases. And boy, what a good hit. And then we were just talking about Pascal earlier. Man, this guy is effective. He loves to get up into the mix. And for a free safety, making the play on the line of scrimmage, that's hustle. What the season numbers for him. And we said he, he, he's missed a couple of games, but he's back and in full force, the senior out of Largo, Florida. And Iowa's going to get good field position here after this punt from Dick Benner. He shanked one out of bounds his last kick. 
This one at the 44. Here comes Dominique Douglas, the true freshman. Taking it all the way to the other side of the field. He's out across midfield and steps out at the 48-yard line of Northern Illinois. Iowa fully in command of this football game. It's 17-0 Hawkeyes, 9.23 to go in the third. He said, Brian, that the Huskies look uninspired here today. Even the mascot is out of it a little bit. Yeah, he seems to be having a lot more enjoyable time than our guys on the field. A lot more unconcerned. 17-0 Iowa for the third straight time starting a drive in northern Illinois territory. Here's Christensen. Back to pass. Throws it short, and he finds the uh, fullback, Tom Bush. He's got some pretty good hands, and he's able to stay with that one for a short pickup. About three yards on first down. Well, last time I was here against Second Purdue, Bush had a career six. day. Caught a couple of really good balls, had some yardage even after the catch. Not on this occasion, though. Kind of showed his, his fullback-esque qualities, but has good hands. You're right. He, he stays with the jugs machines after practice every day to try to hone his skills. Second down and seven. The left-hander comes underneath. He's got Albert Young. Albert Young has it up for the first down. He is a very good receiver, too. Even after missing a couple of games, he still is the Hawkeyes' third leading receiver. They like him on the ground, and they like him when they need to do something like that. He is just so versatile. He can do everything really well. And I think the interesting thing about this offense is, even though it's a 17-point ball game, they're not just sitting back and running the football. They're letting Christensen, the young quarterback, spread his wings a little bit and throw the ball around and get him more comfortable in the system. 289 to 66, that about says it all. Never know that this was a redshirt freshman running this offense. And Albert Young, the ball carrier. And Tim McCarthy quickly wraps up Young. It's going to bring up second down and seven. Place up your skates for college hockey on ESPNU tomorrow as the Bowling Green Falcons face the Miami Redhawks in a battle for the Buckeye State bragging rights. College hockey on ESPNU Sunday at 3 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. $34 million, brand new arena in Oxford, the home of the Red Hawks. Was able to be there earlier this month, a beautiful facility. And uh, college hockey coming your way tomorrow here on the U. 17-0 Hawkeyes, second down and seven. Going to the air, Christensen. Boy, he puts a lot of air under his ball. He was looking for Tony Moyaki, the tight end. And uh, you know, it was out of his reach and out of bounds. But he puts it up very high. Well, there's good logic in that because if you can get the ball arcing well, it come, it's coming straight down out of the sky. And if you error towards longer rather than shorter, there's only one person that can catch the football. Obviously, he errored a little bit too much to the boundary and very frustrated by him because he, he wants to get that throw right. But that's a very, very delicate throw, but shows good touch and accuracy with it as he did early. Iowa trying to convert on third down. Three for eight so far today. Christensen flushed. Looking downfield. Throws. Going for Moyaki again. Penalty flag. This is going to be pass interference. Mark Ryder got in there too soon, and the Hawkeyes are going to benefit. Well, that's the danger of a guy like Christensen, Drew Tate, very much so. He squares up and makes a great throw down the field. The problem is defenders. Defense number eight. Number eight. That's 15 yards from the previous five. It's an automatic, automatic first down. Defenders have to be patient because all the rules still apply. They don't change when a quarterback scrambles, and you have to stay off of the receiver. And it takes a lot of discipline because you want to get in close and make that play. He just got a hair too close, but nonetheless, a good job of coverage. Denny Dornbus, the defensive coordinator, told us this week giving up the big play has been our Achilles heel. And that's giving up a big play. And on first down, Young. A good run, and Iowa continues to keep this football game in their charge. The clock moving now under seven minutes here to go in the third quarter on that first down pickup. Six yards, so it's second down and four. Second and four. Well, we 14. look at the O-line of Iowa. They are just a big, big group. And 
it's very, very difficult for the undersized Northern Iowa guys to be able to withhold, uh, withstand all that through the course of a ball game. They move Moiaki around. They go back to Young. Tries to come over left side. Albert looks to Young change to direction. Carrier. Quickly snuffed out. Keenan Blaylark, the strong side linebacker, in there to make the stop. A former walk-on and a, another overachiever. Like Joe Novak's linebacker. Well, Albert Young is gaining 97 on the day, close to 100 yards. I'm that sure he's be glad to first, have that back. That would be his first 100-yard rushing day of the season. And last year, he had eight. Three receivers set. Christensen under center. Third down and five. Going to the corner of the end zone and again looking for Dominique Douglas. Pretty good coverage over there. And that pass was going to be out of bounds anyway. Adriel Hansborough, the coverage. Well, going back to what we were talking about Kirk Barrett's earlier about getting the job here at Iowa. He didn't think he would stay that long. Nine years he was here. Really hated to leave and went into the NFL for six years where I was with him in Cleveland and Baltimore but couldn't wait to get back here. And when the opportunity presented itself for the head coaching job, he jumped all over it because it's a family-type atmosphere, and he is all about family, unlike the environment in the NFL. Field goal attempt of 32 yards for Kyle Schlicker. He's missed the ball today, and this is his second miss. So Schlicker, very, very reliable as a field goal man, has missed two today. But it's still 17-0 Iowa. There is a breeze in Iowa City here today, but down on the field, not much. There's the <laughs> flag at the top of the goal post, yeah. and Kyle Schlicker's had a tough day here today. He has missed two field goals, one from 37, this one from 32. Well, they're all on the right, the, the left hash, which is the right hash for a right-footed kicker. You can just hook it right in there. Very uncharacteristic, and I know that he's very frustrated. They only get limited opportunities during a ball game, and they like to take advantage of them, obviously. So instead of 23-0, it's 17-0, and Northern Illinois still in this football game. They need a big play here on the flea flicker. Horvath, deep downfield, looking for Perez. He was bumped into. Pass interference, and there's a big play. Marcus Pascal, who's been outstanding today, makes a mistake. Well, it's just the flip side of what we had earlier, and I think for... Harvath, he must not have had a good grip on the football when he got it thrown back to him because that was a very, very poorly thrown football. He had the entire field to work with over the top, and that ball wasn't even close. Didn't even give him a chance, and fortunately, it was so far underthrown that Pascal ended up getting an interference trying to work back to it. So now they've got it first down at 10 at the 35 as you take a look at the season numbers total offense 18th in the NCAA just 66 so far here in this one here's Wolf that's around the corner to the 40 to the 45 and across the 45 yard line before he's caught up with a first down run for Garrett Wolf the first time he's been able to do that today but you notice how there's no gaps anywhere in this defense no matter where he runs there's always somebody there that's because they play team defense there's 11 guys on the football field everyone has a responsibility and they do it really really well first down and 10. northern illinois moving the football horvath away from center sets up pocket closing down but he gets it off to garrett wolf to midfield to the 49 yard line and completely covered up there by edmund miles and company also clinkenborg there from the linebacking group well, you see the discipline of them as, as linebackers. They don't lunge. They don't try to just grasp. They square up to him and corral him. Just like they're trying to corral a calf or something. They just get around him and just keep him in front of them. He has nowhere to go. Discipline football. Second down and six. Wolf. He's going to be short of the first down, it looks like. It's going to bring up third down and about one, but they really need to start getting him going. And that last uh, first down run that he had may be an indication that he's on his way to doing third and one. Well, they'd certainly hope so, and you'd love to see him break one or two and get that energy going, get that, that 
that attitude offensively that we can do something. We can score points. We can move the football because they don't look like they've got it right now. They just look like they're there. It says third down and two. It looks like a long run from here. See if Northern Illinois can pick it up. They've only got a run time here today. Getting to the outside is Wolf. Oh, he had one man to beat, Edmund Miles, but Miles was able to hang with him. And that's not easy because Wolf is fast, but he got him by the shoe tops and knocked him down. But still a first down for Wolf. Well, Miles does a good job. Had nine tackles last week versus Michigan. He's always around the football. He's very responsible and he stays put, does not overcommit. Being the weak side linebacker, it's easy to do, but not with a guy like Garrett Wolf. You just cannot do that. On first down, Horvath. Had time, now flushed down. Gets inside the 35 yard line. It's going to be a short pickup before Mike Blinkenborg just drills it. Look at this. When you, when, you want, when you choose to run the football as a quarterback, they always talk about the hook slide. People laugh about that, but you know what? You see right there why they do it. They're quarterbacks, they're not designed to get hit and beat up every play. Madison got him from behind, Klinkenborg from the front. Madison is forced to fumble four times this year. That ranks third in the country. Wasn't able to do it on that play. Second down and seven. Horvath looking to throw. Short pass to number 14, Jared Carter, met immediately by Godfrey. And it'll bring up third down and about three. Well, I just think it's amazing how you never see Iowa out of position. They're just they're just so smart. And, and even the last time I came here, I told Kirk Parents when I got on the field, I just they, it was really amazing because you it's almost a prototype of what you would want out of the defense. Now granted, they're not unbelievable athletes, but they know their job and they do it well. Crowd getting behind the Hawkeyes. Horvath trying to change the play. It's not going to be easy with all the crowd noise. On third down. Pass rush got it away, but nobody home in the secondary. M Miguel Merrick coming up on that blitz. And Horvath was in trouble right from the outset. Look at this hit on this replay. Well, they bring everybody, and they saw that Garrett Wolf was going to be matched up against Klinkenborg, their middle linebacker. What a dream matchup. But guess what? When you bring pressure and you cannot protect, it's not going to work. You don't have time to sit and wait as he would have liked to. Now they're going for it on fourth down. Boy, does Northern Illinois need this. Fourth down and two. They were unsuccessful on a fourth down attempt earlier in the game. Throws, has it. Blake Davis with a great catch despite the double coverage. First down, Northern Illinois. Well, Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for Iowa, does not gamble often, but the last two plays, he has brought everyone and manned up his, his the receivers, but there was nowhere to throw that football, and you have to give credit to Horvath, who, who snuck it in there, and Davis, their best receiver, shows why by bringing in the tight throw. John Bond, the offensive coordinator, calls Horvath Cerebra, just a heady quarterback. Goes back to the running game. Here's Wolf bouncing off tacklers, banging his way down to the 11-yard line. That's the Garrett Wolf we saw in the first half of the season, but in the last couple of weeks, haven't seen much of. Looks like he's got a little bit of energy about him now. Looks like this offense is starting to think, you know what? We can move the football. We can score points. I talked about momentum earlier in the football game it's a delicate delicate thing a few plays here a few throws here and all of a sudden they're starting to believe that they can put points on the board against this Iowa defense they're moving the football and Wolf is running with purpose again 10th play of the drive longest obviously of the day for Northern Illinois he's going to go to Wolf in the flat nobody in front of him inside the 10 and skids down at the 6 yard line Mike Klinkenborg on his back but we saw the 272 pound Brian Madison, number 99 for Iowa, peeling off and trying to cover Garrett Wolf. That's not a great combination, would you think, Clay? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, that's not going to add up at the end of the day, but Klinkenborg does a great job of tracking him down and stopping him before he can get to the end zone. So it's first down and goal from the six yard line as you take a look at the first and second half numbers for Wolf. What a contrast. Going to the end zone. Good coverage. The penalty flags come in. 
Wow, this could be another pass interference call on this drive going against the Hawkeyes. Might be on Bradley Fletcher here. We'll have to see what Steve Payman has to say. Pass interference, defense number 29. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And it is on Fletcher. They're going to put it down at about the one-yard line. Well, they're doing what they did to stop Purdue's passing game. They're getting in the face of these wide receivers, and so they're having to work hard, and Davis does a good job of getting inside leverage, and you just got to. Bradley Fletcher being aggressive, but you've got to get off of him. They're going to call it, and you never know when that ref's watching and that flag's going to come out. Actually placed at the two, first and goal. Not enough room to operate. And Garrett Wolf is going to be sore after this one here today. Well, Ryan Bain wrapped him up inside. Yeah, Ryan Bain, big guy, 282 against Garrett Wolf, 177. That's not a dream matchup. Not an inside runner type guy. So we'll see if Northern Illinois can finish this drive off in the fourth quarter. We've played three. 17-0 Iowa here in Iowa City. We're back after this. <laughs> Iowa leading 17-0 as we look ahead to the fourth quarter. But Northern Illinois is at the one-yard line. It's been quite a drive, and they've gotten Garrett Wolf back into this football game. Well, we wondered where he has been the last two ball games, and especially early in this ball game but he's been able to catch a few balls out of the backfield. That has loosened up the running lanes for himself to be able to get the football down the field like they've done so very much this season with him. Second down and goal to go at the one. This drive started at the 20. There have been some pass interference calls go against Iowa. Wolf, touchdown, Northern Illinois. And they're back in this football game. Well, there's a handful of fans here for Northern Illinois, and they are excited. Garrett Wolf getting the half-yard run for the touchdown. We've been wondering where he's been, but he surely showed up on that drive to get the touchdown, get them back within two scores of winning this ball game. Extra point attempt. This is Chris Mendon. Pretty accurate kicker. And it's 17-7, so just like that, a 10-point game now. Garrett Wolf, he's not very big, but he has strong legs, a strong upper body. Helps him control the football. They give it to him from one yard out. Bangs it in, and it's 17-7 now with a lot of time left to play here in Iowa City. And don't forget, a couple of missed field goals in this contest from Kyle Schlicker. We'll see if that comes into play later on. Well, that makes it into a three-score ball game as opposed to two. And going back to Garrett Wolf, we were talking to Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for Iowa. He said he's like watching a highlight reel from high school of a young running back. But the difference is he's doing it against college players. And he's so small, but yet he can stop and turn on a dime. And he said versus a DBD, a, a DB one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to win every time. Damian Sims and Anthony Bowman back to return this kick for Iowa. And again, we're having some trouble keeping the ball on the has, tee has, down on the field. Has there been one time where he has set the ball on the tee and it stayed? Every time we look up, the ball falls over. Surely he can't have a problem with putting it on the tee. Because it really, look, there's, there's, there's little or no wind down on the field. Maybe it's that one inch tee that they've gone to. It's a little more difficult to keep aloft. Mendick. This thing stabilized. And this is Sims from about three yards deep. Here it comes. Out to the 20. Good return to the 25 and pulled down at the 27 yard line. That's where Iowa will start first down and 10. We talked to Kirk Ferentz this week about the goals for this football team after the disappointing losses to Indiana and Michigan and successive weeks. Win out. 
Finished with nine wins, and that would guarantee us a January bowl game this year. And, uh, of course, we'd like to run that streak to five straight January bowl games. Yes, they're one of only four teams who've been in four straight and would probably be only one of two that would do it for a fifth time. A win today gets them bowl eligible. Six and three on the season. Play three. Kirstensen with South Park. Across his body to Herb Grigsby, who does a beautiful job keeping his feet in bounds out to the 37 yard line. It's going to be a first Adrian down, a fresh four for the Hawkeyes. Grigsby got off to a slow start after serving a team suspension at the start of the year. Did not play in that Montana game. Still looking for his first touchdown of the year, but you know what? They'll settle for first downs at this point, and he gets one there. Yeah, they need to move the chains and run the clock. And obviously, if they can get points, that would be a bonus. A shift at the line. And St. Chandler, the tight end in motion. Christensen. Gets away from one potential sacker, and not the second. Christensen goes down. Keenan Blaylock, the strong side linebacker, busting through to get him. Well, he, he laid the wood on that one. And I think he might have felt it more than Christensen. He looks like he hit him a little awkwardly, but... He does kind of a red dog blitz, sees that his guy's not going anywhere, and comes up as he's been corralled and really makes him pay for holding on to that football. You know, what Ferentz told us about Christensen is he's got a good arm. Not as nifty on his feet as Jason Manson, the other potential starter here today. Defense, defense. He wasn't able to use his feet to get out of that trip. On second down at 16, they go back to the ground game. A penalty flag comes in from uh, the uh, referee, Steve Payment. It's going to be a holding call against the Hawkeyes. Well, you just mentioned Jason Manson, who's their fifth-year senior. And how many great things did Kirk Ferentz have to say about that young man? He said he was the nicest guy that they've had here since he's been here as a head coach. During the run, During the run holding, holding offense, offense number 52, that penalty is declined. Third down. And he, even when... It was back to deciding between him and Drew Tate who would play, and Tate got the nod. He has been very, very cooperative and helping him and doing all that he could do. And I'm sure in this situation, even today, not getting the nod to be the starter has done a good job of helping him all he can on the sidelines as we watch Albert Young right up the middle. Uh, that holding call on Rafael Eubanks. Yeah, that was freshman center. Third down and 13 for the Hawkeyes, and Christensen wants a timeout. So Northern Illinois has some momentum swinging to their side here right now. Well, we've seen this happen earlier in the ball game where he had to call timeout because he didn't know what he was seeing defensively. Looked like they were doing some things that he, he didn't recognize and felt a little unsure of the play that was called and wanted to talk it over with the coaches before he made a, an error or a mistake. The full day of college football continues on ESPNU at 3.30 Eastern. North Carolina bragging rights on the line as Wake Forest takes on North Carolina. Of course, John Bunting not coming out, not coming back for next season, finishing out the year in Chapel Hill. College football presented by Allstate on ESPNU. For more information, go to ESPNU.com. We were in the Chapel Hill not that long ago. John Bunting not coming back as we take a look at... Some of the teams that are already bowl eligible, that's what Iowa is trying to become here today. These teams were not in bowl games last year, but have already clinched bowl spots this year. Well, I think it's amazing. You look at the turnaround of some teams that you just would not expect. I look at Arkansas stands out to me above all else, along with Pittsburgh, who just did not have good years and haven't really in the past, but have come back and had really fantastic seasons this year and have come literally out of nowhere. Arkansas on ESPNU later tonight taking on Louisiana Monroe. You see Kirk Ferentz. Again, his first career win at Iowa came against this Northern Illinois team back in 1999. His eighth year as head coach of the Hawkeyes. The Hawks have a 10-point lead, 17-7. 13-17 to play here out of the shotgun. Christensen stepping up, looking downfield. He is sacked at the 32. Northern Illinois has kicked it up a notch here in the late third quarter and now into the fourth. Well, that is persistency. 
And that defensive line of doing a great job of not giving up on the play, continuing to fight and to push and to get to the quarterback. That's Adam Schroeder, the junior out of Love's Park, Illinois, from his nose guard spot, was able to snuff Christensen out. He was not going to be denied that one. So Fenstermaker, who hasn't had a lot of work here today, on to punt, standing at the 20-yard line, gets it away. It's a good punt. Marcus Perez drifting back and handles it with a fair catch at the 21. So Northern Illinois has some things going its way right now. We'll see if they can come back in this one. 17-7 with 12 and a half to go. This is the sixth meeting between these two teams. Northern Illinois has never beaten Iowa. It could happen today. They've fired up here, especially defensively. Well, Blaylock does a good job on the, the late rush, the Red Dog Blitz, and then the persistency of that defensive line. Adam Schroeder making the play, getting excited about football. We have to go back to that Indiana game where they were leading Iowa 21-7 and lost that ball game. It's 17-7 with 12-15 to play. We'll see if Northern Illinois can come back. Knocked down, Horvath was his arm going forward. Steve Payman right there says yes, it's an incomplete pass. Brian Madison was all over it. <laughs> that looked really painful. It looked like he was ready to release that ball, and he caught his arm as it was coming forward. Man, that, that's got shoulder written all over it. Man, it's part of being a quarterback. Got to be tough. Bounce back up. Second down and 10. Horvath sets and throws it away. Third row in. Let's go to Mike Gleason for a Sports Center U in game update. Clay, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame starting to open up some separation. Brady Quinn, this time using his legs. Nobody opens, so he sees an opening. He takes it 19 yards for the score. Brady Quinn's a better athlete than, uh, than most people realize. An outstanding athlete in high school, three-sport player in high school. Oklahoma, Missouri, Paul Thompson, second touchdown pass, and right now it's 23-10. Sooners on top of number 23, Missouri. Play. And here it's 17-7, Iowa on top. Northern Illinois with a big third down and 10 situation as you see the yards. Northern Illinois has turned it up here in the second half. They go to Garrett Wolf. And the run is going to bring him out to about the 30-yard line, well short of the first down. Well, looks there's like a flag down. They got really lucky on that play. Looks like it might be a face mask. The Northern Illinois coaches were very, very excited. But my question is, what kind of a call was that on third and 10? Garrett Wolf has not ran the ball well all day. Personal foul, pulling the face mask, defense number 47. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run with an automatic first down. Kirk Ferentz upset. That's a big play you give up to Northern Illinois. That was one of the least penalized teams in the country last year. But Iowa's had more penalties this season and this is a big mistake keeping this drive alive for northern illinois at a critical time well i still just don't understand the call and you can't count on a face mask obviously to get you to the first down but third and ten and running garrett wolf to the left i understand that bad pass that was high and behind the intended receiver brandon davis and horvath who has been very accurate throughout his career and 61 percent this season coming into the game has had I would say a bad day throwing the football <laughs> bad day I think that that sums it up last year he was 71 percent he was number one in the country in his accuracy that's just not how he throws the football he is rattled for some reason today Wolf is the lone setback they are going to run trying to navigate through that defensive front four can't really do it Ryan Bain is there and it's going to bring up third down and about eight but I go back to Western Michigan when they shut down the running game and they did not expect it and Harvath had to start throwing the football he just looked out of sync in that game like they didn't expect them to shut down Garrett Wolf and he didn't know that he was going to have to put the ball down the field and it looks very similar to what he's doing today it's like he does not want the responsibility of having to carry this offense Third and a long seven, Horvath, five-step drop, looking downfield. Sets, throws, has Davis, but he's met immediately. 
Stepping up is Pascal to make the stop. Bradley Fletcher there. We got but another penalty flag still. Another flag on the play. This might be against Iowa again. Illegal helmet contact. Wow. Defense number 47. And it's on. Uh, yards and then the run automatic first down. They're going to call this on Mitch King, the defensive tackle for a helmet to helmet contact. Well, this is a call that I'm not real sure that I agree with. I just. It's very, very difficult to control where your helmet goes. And if you watch, it didn't even seem like it got there. Brian Madison doing a great job of trying to get to him. Actually, it was Madison with the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. It doesn't even look like he did. They made a mistake on the call. Here's another look. And this might be under review because every play is reviewable. Ah, it was after the fact. It was late. Mitch King, you were right. After the fact, came in with almost like a headbutt, looked like. Huh. That, that might have, should have been a little more severe penalty than just a flag. Look at the penalties. 54 yards against Iowa now. Wolf nowhere to run on first down and 10. This is going to be a loss on the play. Mitch King making up for it a little bit there. Well, it's a loss of two yards. He needs to step up. That was a silly, silly mistake. You just cannot do that. You're breathing life into an offense by doing something silly like that. But watch this kid. He is a very, very explosive guy. Gets off of blocks really, really well and was not penciled in as a starter until later today when he got the nod because he's not been healthy. Well, he missed the last couple of games. Leg injury. From the shotgun. Horvath. Batted down at the line. <laughs> uh, Madison and King have been Vicious on this uh, series. Well, he was he was kind of running for his life. He it was all closing in on him, and he had to get rid of that football. And what a great awareness! If you're getting beat and you can't make progress to get into the quarterback, what do you do? You stick your hand up and you jump. We could have caught it had he been a little bit more aware. It'd been tough, but man, what a good play by Madison! The awareness of when he's throwing that football. Madison is the defensive. Uh, Line coach at Florida, his dad, Greg. And it brings up third down and 12. It's going to be close to a first down for Greg Turner. Hasn't caught a pass all day. And uh, if he's got enough for a first down, it's going to be a huge catch. Well, it's going to all depend upon the mark. Very, very close. But obviously, I don't think it's relevant. They are going to go for it on fourth down. I cannot see them <laughs> trying a field goal from this distance. It's going to be oh, yeah, you're going to measure it. Surprising. It's very close. So it's going to bring up fourth and about a half yard. Horvath sends the man in motion. This could be the ball game. Play clock down to one. Horvath keeps, and it looks like he's got it. Well, I tell you, you could have missed that had you not looked closely because they were trying to draw them off sides, and it was a play that you call where you try to get them. But if you can't, all he does is simply goose the, goose the center, and they try to get it sneaking the quarterback, and they did it. Good job. Horvath hopes to get a shot in the NFL, Brian, after his college playing days are over he's a smart quarterback he's had a difficult day today but he's got his team on an important drive right now at the 25 yard line of Iowa looking to throw Horvath going to the end zone has a man caught touchdown Northern Illinois what a great catch by Brick Davis in the back of the end zone Well, just as soon as you count out Horvath, he comes up with a big-time throw. And what a great catch by Britt Davis, being aware of where he is, dragging the foot up just like a good wide receiver does, and securing the football to get him within three points if they can put this extra point through the uprights. Now that play is going to be reviewed. Maybe they're questioning on whether his foot was in bounds or 
Well, I think it's more about getting the ball secure because he drags his foot up really good here. Nice. It gets both of them in. Could have counted in the NFL, but I think it's more a question of was the ball secure? I think they've made the right call here. There's no question. He grabs that ball and sucks it right into his gut. I think that's going to be a touchdown. Yes. Every play is reviewed this year in college football. And uh, some calls have, have gone the way of the opponent for Iowa the last couple of weeks. To say the least. Yeah, Kirk Ferentz was upset with the whole system last week. After review, video evidence confirms the ruling on the field. Touchdown. So the officials get it right. And Northern Illinois could be within three points. As you take a look at the last two drives, 158 yards of offense, a couple of touchdowns. Before that, just 47 yards. In eight possessions, not just plays, folks. That was possessions. An important extra point attempt for Nendick. Spot, kick is up, and it is good. And the Huskies are within a field goal. What a catch by Davis. What a throw by Horvath. And Northern Illinois is right back in it. Mike Leeson, Coach Cooper back at Sports Center. You, Auburn has taken the lead over Ole Miss. Yeah, here's a little pitch, uh, toss back sweep. Good blocking by the tight end, offensive right tackle. The old off tackle play on the goal line. That's Brad Lester taking it in for the Tigers, so it's now 14 10. And check out the game in Camp Randall. Illinois had the big lead. Wisconsin's coming back. It's now 24 20. Badgers trailing by only four. Play. Well, it took Auburn a while to heat up. It took Wisconsin a while to get some traction. Same thing for Northern Illinois here today in Iowa City, but they're back in this football game. Couple of touchdowns. It's 17 14 now. A lot of time on the clock. 8 40 to go. And you take a look at the quarterback, Horvath. What a job he's done rallying the troops. Iowa needs something positive to happen on this possession. Through the end zone, and this is going to be a touchback, and the Hawkeyes have it first down and 10 at the 20. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Jake Christensen, the young redshirt freshman, getting his first college start here today, how he handles the situation now that a lot riding on this series. Well, it's a little bit more different than it was starting this ball game where there wasn't a lot of pressure now. He's going to have to respond, and even more so, I think Albert Young needs to get involved and be able to move the football on the ground to relieve some of that pressure we talked about earlier. Backing away from center, turns and hands off to Young. Gets into the secondary to the 25. Good run and a first down out to the 31-yard line. Hansbro escorted him out of bounds, but a pickup of 11 on first down for Young. And that's what they need. Well, we had talked about earlier when Garrett Wolf would get outside, there was always somebody there. They never break containment in, in, in Iowa's defense. But look here in Northern the Illinois. There's gaps. There are holes. And he needs to continue to find those as this drive continues. It's young again. Penalty flags down. And short of the 35-yard line. But there are markers on the field. has had some trouble with the penalties in the second half. And that's part of the reason that Northern Illinois has been able to get back in this football game. Well, it basically sustained the last During drive. The run, holding, offense number 52. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. It remains first down. Here's a look at offensive coordinator, Ken O'Keefe. Well, and I think it'll be interesting, though, to see how he responds as well because his situation is different now too he can't just free wheel and call whatever he likes he has to think them through just a little bit more than the beginning of this ball game and Christensen doesn't have as much of a command of the offense as a guy like Drew Tate did the southpaw back to throw does finds Boyaki the tight end but he's going to be well short of the first down he stayed in bounds clock continues to run well, it wasn't the most perfectly thrown ball, but not a really tight ball, but it got where it needed to go. Very precise throw, though. It hasn't seemed to phase him in the least that he's going to have to be a, a little more precise with the football because one turnover here could cost him the ball game. Pickup of 14, second down and six. Christensen brings him up to the line. 
up by three. Play clock down to seven. Wanting to throw again, over the middle. Finds Brodell coming across, shakes loose, midfield to the 40. And pulled down from behind, he gets to the 31-yard line. Andy Brodell, the sophomore out of Ankeny, Iowa. Boy, did the Hawkeyes need that. Well, I tell you what, it was a nice throw, but I think the more interesting thing about the play was is that Chandler, who was trailing behind him after the catch, kind of hit Mark right, a, right in the back. And technically, a clip, but nobody called it, and it went unseen and got another 15 or 20 yards after the run, maybe after the, the catch. Maybe the biggest completion of the day for Christensen. He's going to go to the air again. The play fake, now he's being chased. Oh, what a big play for Northern Illinois. Larry English, the right defensive end, chased Christensen for about 15 yards, finally got him and pulled him down. Well, I tell you what, Larry English, a guy we had referenced earlier in the first half who has not been very active, haven't seen a lot of him, but does a, there's the bump in the back, a little bit more on the shoulder than I thought. Pretty fair, but a great job, but we watch English here. Here's a guy who's very, he's the most athletic guy on defense. He's the biggest surprise for them, as, as the coaching staff will put it, and gets his ninth sack of the year. Second down and 19 after that sack by English. Looking to throw. Over the middle has a man, it's Chandler. Inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. Mark Ryder the stop, but not after a pickup of a first down. Boy, I'll tell you what, we talked about Chandler being the go-to guy in big situations. Well, Most of his catches this year have been for first down. First downs, and you notice that he's kind of gotten away from him. He was his go-to guy earlier in the football game. He's kind of going back to his roots, so to speak, late in the ball game when he really needs the catch to, to come up big. A gain of 24 for Chandler. And now it's first down and 10 at the 16. Boy, a touchdown here for Iowa would be the haymaker. At least he thinks so. Here's Young picking his way to the 13-yard line. Then he meets Dustin Utchick. Good run on first down. And more importantly for Iowa now, Brian, is that clock continues to move. It does, and that becomes their friend. Even though it's only a three-point lead, it really is irrelevant. The team that's winning the ball game, the clock becomes their friend. And all they care about is getting that time to run off the clock. Points are great, but they're not vital as long as they can get the clock continuing to run and again the biggest Achilles heel for Northern Illinois this season has been the big play that they've given up on defense we've seen some big plays in this drive for Northern or for Iowa now here is Young trying to get around the corner on the right side he meets Mark Ryder let's take a look at the storylines that you talked about at the beginning of the broadcast some of the keys to look for the missed field goals by Schluter, key in this ballgame. Garrett Wolf not having a banner day. They've done a good job, Iowa has, of con containing them. Iowa's defense has allowed 175 yards, moving the football. Not great, but haven't been great lately. Christensen chased again. Gets away, looking to the end zone, throws. It's going to be incomplete. He was trying to hook up with Chandler in the back of the end zone. Well, that was a big stop for Northern Illinois. It puts them in fourth down, and you know we just got through talking about it. They've missed two very short field goals, and here the missed opportunity. Christensen does a good job of staying alive. He's got Chandler in the back of the end zone, just a hair too much air underneath it, and can't connect. So they're going to look like they're going to stay with their offense and try to go for it. Well, there's Kyle Schlicker, who's missed two field goals today. Just one from 37 and one from 32. They're going to go for it on fourth and four. Christensen steps up, throws. Touchdown, Chandler. The red shirt freshman with a big test on that series for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and he passes with flying colors. Well, that looked very, very simple, but it was not. Northern Illinois was manned up. 
And they had their free safety, Dustin Uchik, on the tight end. Chandler, he was he did a really good job of coverage, but again, Christensen, very, very accurate, put it right where he needed to to get the touchdown. Slicker on for the extra point now to make it a 10-point game again. And he does. So 14 unanswered points by Northern Illinois. That run stops. And Iowa gets a touchdown to make this 24-14 with under four minutes to play in Iowa City. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Well, the Iowa offense didn't know what kind of hands it was going to be in today because Drew Tate was out with that ligament damage on his non-throwing hand. So they went with the redshirt freshman, Jake Christensen, today. And he has played well, well especially he, on that last series when they really needed it. Well, he has responded. I think there are a lot of happy Hawkeye coaches on the boundary right now, especially Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. That, to, to be able to put a kid in this situation and respond the way he did, that's a blessing. Under four minutes to play. Northern Illinois is going to get the ball back here. Marcus Perez. Nice spin move on that far sideline, but steps out of bounds at the 23. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Well, Clay, the Badgers uh, have taken the lead now. Controversial call, maybe, maybe not. Stocko hooks up with Andy Crooks here. I like this call. A little screen to your fullback over the middle. I like that call. He got those big linemen out in front. Now, did he fumble or did he not fumble? They reviewed or we take another look at it. Now, it looks like his knee is not down. The ball's loose. Goes in the end zone. He jumps on it, so I think it's a touchdown. Looks like a good call to me, Mike. Blitz coming. I agree. I think that... That was a touchdown by looking at that play. Uh, your thoughts on what you just saw? Well, I, I know there is a rule about the ball moving forward into the end zone off of a fumble. And so they might pull it back to where he released it. Which would have been the one-yard line. One Still yard line. a good situation for Wisconsin. Without but question. What a game for Illinois today, giving Wisconsin a scare. Of course, it's not over yet. Oh, there is another one of the drop passes we've seen too many times for Northern Illinois today. Britt Davis, usually a sure-handed receiver, should have had that one. Well, he's a, he's their go-to guy, and Harbath puts it right on the money. And I think he had to be thinking, Marcus Pascal, number 25, sitting right there waiting for him. Breathing down his neck. Short-handed it just a bit, I think. Call that alligator arms. <laughs> oh, yeah. So a big play here for Northern Illinois. They might have to kiss this game goodbye if they don't pick this one up. They're 2 of 13 on third down. Time to throw. Now rolling out of the pocket. Still looking downfield. He's going to run. Caught from behind at the 24-yard line by Ryan Bain. Well, and he, he had Brandon Davis's tight end underneath. The problem was he had only a couple of routes down the football field and had nowhere to go with it. He was trying to get the big chunk of yardage as opposed to getting it underneath and making and letting someone make a play to get the first down. Northern Illinois calling a timeout. Horvath goes over to talk things over with John Bond, the offensive coordinator, in his third year. And we've got another great football game on ESPNU coming up after the conclusion of this one. 24th ranked Wake Forest taking on North Carolina. Battle of the uh, state of North Carolina today. College football presented by Allstate on ESPNU. And then coming up tonight at 7 Eastern, Arkansas at Louisiana Monroe. The Razorbacks trying to stay hot. They're ranked 13th in the nation. And then the 65th Magic City Classic. And uh, it's Alabama State and Alabama A&M. College football prime time presented by City on ESPNU. That's coming up tonight. And that dog, he was up and running around for a while, but now that the Huskies are 10 points down, he's going back to sleep. You remember his name? Victory. Victor E. That's pretty intelligent. I like that. Well, they need a Victor E right here today, and they've got two scores to get it done and not a whole lot of time on the clock to do it. So on fourth down and eight, Northern Illinois having to go for it. After the timeout, Horvath will 
Step back into the shotgun. Two for three today on fourth down. Boy, they need this one. Horvath hit as he throws, and it's turned over. That's A.J. Eads jumping around down there. Mike Blinkenborg. It was ruled a fumble. Iowa takes over, and they're going to be able to run the rest of the clock out. Well, Eads, a freshman who got a start a few weeks back versus Purdue, filling in for Mike Humpel, who was injured. Great job on the hit. Farbath trying to get the ball down the field. Might should have just tucked it and ran it. Might have had a chance. That's Eads with the hit. Clinkenborg the recovery. And we're under three minutes to go. Christensen likely just going to hand off, and he does, to Albert Young. Who's gone over 100 yards here today for the first time this season. Boy, what a monkey off of his back. Well, it really is to be injured and to be out. I know it's very, very difficult to have to sit and watch and even question your abilities, your skills to be able to get back. And sure enough, comes back with a vengeance, getting 100 yards on the day and helping his Iowa offense control this clock, especially late in this ball game. They knew they were going to need to run today a good bit with the young quarterback running the offense. They have, and Young has responded. Second down and four. Trying to pick it up on the ground again, Young. Looks like he's going to be short of the first down. Hit by Utchik, who's had a nice game for Northern Illinois. So we take a look at the uh, remaining schedule for the Hawkeyes, and we told you about their goal to win out get to nine wins and get back to a January bowl game. Well, Northwestern and Minnesota certainly look like winnable games, even though the Minnesota game is on the road. But Wisconsin could be tough. They're at home for it. We'll see what happens on November 11th when the Badgers come to Iowa City. Third down and one. We'll have to pick up the first down here. Keep running that clock. Christensen lost the football, turned back over to the Huskies. Adriel Hansbrough recovers. Well, again, we see Larry English in constant pursuit, not giving Christensen any time to breathe. Hold on, wait a second. The official has called an incomplete pass. Let's take another look. Well, he tried to flick it out there, but English, you got to give credit. Oh, I don't know. That looked like a fumble to me. Wow. They, they need to review that one. That was a fumble, folks. There's no way, shape, or form about it. That's a fumble. And let's see if they get this one right. Because that was pretty clear cut. As we get another look at it from the front end, that ball is loose. That's just a bad call. Hopefully, they'll get it right in the The ruling on booth. the field is being challenged by the head coach of Northern Illinois that the pass was incomplete. So Novak has challenged this play. You only get one a game, and I think that probably was the one he should have called it for because that's going to be their football. Here's another look. There's no way Christensen was trying to throw this football. Well, from our angle, it did. It kind of looked like he was trying to toss it out there, but when you get that front-end look at it, that ball clearly comes straight out of his hands. And, you know, that's the problem with quarterbacks running the football because they're trying to make plays, but you got to tuck it away. Joe Novak got the job at age 51 and was hoping it was going to be his last stop. Had some trouble getting the program turned around. Finally has. He's in his 11th year as head coach. He has challenged this play on the field. They said it was an incomplete pass. Looks like a fumble to us. Joe Novak said to us this week his heart still aches. And that last-minute loss to Akron in the MAC title game last year. So close to the school's first MAC championship since 1983. He told us this week he thought his team would need eight wins to get to a bowl game. Came into this one with five. I think you really got to give them credit for fighting back. They had nothing. I mean, nothing going offensively. Garrett Wolf was shut down. Harbath could not get the football down the field. No points on the board as we watched the replay. I think we've seen that enough times. It only took one viewing for us. I don't know how many it's going to take for them. Well, this is part of the 
thing that Kirk Ferentz was so upset about last week in the Michigan game. Why did it take so long to get the call made on the field? Well, and my point was that if this is something, a drive that Iowa needs, and say it isn't a fumble, we shut down for 10 minutes. The momentum of their offense is shut down. They give Northern Illinois a chance to regroup, or the defense a chance to regroup, and it takes away the flow and the momentum of the drive on a clear-cut case of that is this the fumble. There is indisputable video evidence that the ball was fumbled by Iowa. Recovered by Northern Illinois, first and 10 on the 18. Look at the number of plays that have been paired from the football game, about 13 combined. And I don't, I don't know, if you're going to take 10 minutes to make a call on the field, why not just, just make the officials accountable down on the field and give the plays back to the players? That's why they come to college, to play football. I agree 100%. And the, the time that you're saving by running the clock on the kickoffs and the change of possessions, you're losing it with the replay. Well, I don't mind the replay, but let's, let's make it consistent and let's hurry it up. It shouldn't take this long. A minute 25 to go. Northern Illinois does have the football. We'll say this. The officials did get it right after the review. Yes, positive. That's a good thing. You like to see it working right. I think that's the issue is a lot of times it, it doesn't. And, and now Northern Illinois wants to call timeout. Timeout. Yes. Joe Novak has called a timeout. One thing that has been affected by the replay and by the uh, less time on the clock because of how they start the play on the kickoff and the fewer plays in the game. There, there aren't as many 100-yard rushers. We said Albert Young had eight last season. Even well, this year's just one now after today. That, that's a phenomenal stat to me, the half of a cut in half from last year. Now, granted, I was talking about it before the broadcast. I don't know that you can attribute all of that to a shorter game, but certainly a large majority of them can be attributed to the shorter game for less plays at six and a half per offense, which is less. I can understand wanting to expedite the process of the game, get get this into a three-hour package. That's, that's okay with me, but I don't necessarily know that you do it um, at the expense of things like this. I don't see how having fewer 100 yard rushers is good for college football. Well, I just think that if you if you look at how many times plays have been reviewed by coaches, how many challenges that they've had, there is a very, very small percentage. 18 percent going into this game have been overturned. That's not a whole lot. Look, we see at 109 challenges, only 20 have been reversed. And Joe, Joe Novak just notched it up a few, but yeah. that's just not a very good percentage. After the reversal, first down and 10, Northern Illinois. They need to do something and in a hurry. Here is Wolf. Has room to run. Stiff arm out to the 30, to the 35-yard line, and out of bounds at the 36. Boy, that is the Garrett Wolf we have seen many times this season. Not a lot in the first half today, but what a second half he's had. Well, it's almost like a twilight zone because we haven't seen it. And we need to see it more right here, right now. Clock moving again. A minute and 10 seconds to go. Now penalty flags come in. Bovath was in his drop, and flags came in. False start, lost seven, sir, 87. That's a five-yard penalty on the main first down. When you're in a situation of urgency, you can't have that. But especially now that the clock is going to run as soon as they set the football because of an offensive penalty. Clock begins to move. Corvan. Down the middle of the field, tip, intercepted. Picked off by Mike Humpel. There was concern in Iowa at the start of the season. Who's going to replace Chad Greenway? Who's going to replace Abdul Hodge at linebacker? Well, guys like Mike Humpel and Mike Klinkenborg have done a nice job taking over, and Humpel with a critical interception here on that tip pass. It was tipped by Matt Kroll at the line. Well, how many times have we seen this? And Horvath is not a small guy. He's 6'3". But they are just being so aware up front of when he's releasing that football. That takes a lot of talent to be able to tip that ball like they've done all game long. Christensen is going to take a knee here. 40 seconds to go. 
And the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to become bowl eligible after this win. It wasn't easy, especially in the second half, as Northern Illinois scored 14 answered to come back in. Well, I think for me, I know for the coaches on the Hawkeye side are very excited to be able to see a young quarterback who, as I said in the open, will be the future of this offense, perform so well in his first collegiate start against a quality ball club. Northern Illinois has called their last timeout, so they're not going to be able to stop the clock from here on out, 35 seconds to go. And also important for Iowa, they stop a two-game losing streak. Certainly the most surprising loss of the season uh, for, for any team in the Big Ten was that loss to Indiana a couple of weeks ago. No shame in losing to Michigan right. last week, but they get things turned around with what a win here today. Having to play the number one and number two team in the country, who has to do that? Iowa had to do that and play them very, very well. Kirk Ferentz said that those two games that he put his head on the pillow slept really well. The only one he didn't know, obviously the Iowa game, which should not have happened. But he did give them a lot of credit for playing a good game. Christensen. Another knee, and that's going to do it as the Iowa Hawkeyes are eligible now for a bowl game, but they're thinking bigger than that. They want to win out. They want to get to nine victories and get back to a January bowl game for the fifth straight year. Well, I had mentioned it earlier. There's only one other team that could maybe fall into that category, and that would be USC over the last five years appearing on a January day bowl. That is big. That is That says a lot for the program, a lot for Coach Ferentz and his staff. Jake Christensen gets his first college start. Here today gets his first collegiate victory. Good second half by Northern Illinois, but it goes for not as they drop to five and four. As we take a look at the Big Ten standings, Iowa now at the win, now to six and three. And still got Wisconsin ahead. They've got Minnesota ahead. They've also got a game coming up against Northwestern. That'll be next week. Well, just a, a quality field there of teams. There's not, there's very, very few that aren't playing well this year. Iowa certainly is one of them that is. Now, once again, the final score, Iowa 24, Northern Illinois 14. Coming up next on ESPNU at SportsCenter U. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Brian Kinchin and our entire crew, I'm Clay Mappick. So long from Iowa City. For now, let's go to Mike Gleason and John Cooper. Thanks a lot, Clay. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Wake, of course, losing Ben Mock, their starting quarterback. The first game of the season, Riley Skinner stepped in. Doesn't light the world on fire statistically, but he only has one pick, and the bottom line is they have one loss. So what about the Iowa game now? Uh, you know, Drew Tate doesn't play, so I guess, listen to Brian and Clay, I guess it is some silver lining that they got the chance to check out Christensen. An ugly win, I think. I don't think Iowa played their best ball game, but they all count one. Their defense is solid. They're playing good. Without, uh, without Drew Tate, you take any win you can get. That's true. Albert Young, their talented tail tailback, stepped up today also. And any time you have your starting quarterback out, you need that other leadership. And Albert Young is obviously the leader in the backfield with Tate being out, and he stepped up. Most important thing is a W, of course, for Kirk Ferentz, but they played very well against Garrett Wolf, especially in the first half. Wolf held to 11 yards in the first half. Let's go to the big house, number two, Michigan. By John Sears as the story. The Hawkeyes returned home today trying to end a two-game skid. No Drew Tate at quarterback. He had surgery on his left thumb. In steps redshirt freshman Jake Christensen for his first Iowa start. But he didn't get off to the start he would have liked. First throw of the game off of Scott Chandler's hands right into the hands of Tim McCarthy. He's headed the other way. The first INT of Jake's career. But no worries, the defense held, no damage done. Next Iowa drive to get the running game going. Albert Young, healthy, off the left side. Right at the camera, Matt Nelson heads up right into your living room. That's good for 19 yards. Very next play, give it to the workhorse, the guy that got you here. Young, from seven yards out, untouched, into the end zone. Young cracked the century mark for the first time this year. 124 yards and a touchdown on the day. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's been a while since I got Got that number right there, so uh, I'm happy about it. Still in the first, they let the young gun air it out. Christensen up top to another redshirt freshman, Trey Strauss. 
What a diving grab, 47 yards into Husky territory. That led to a Kyle Schlicker field goal, 10 nothing Hawks after one. Second quarter, the defense steps up. Phil Horvath, nowhere to go, fires, picked off by Marcus Pascal at the 31. Hawks in business once again. Just before the half, Christensen, who else? finds the true freshman, Dominique Douglas, stretches into the end zone, gets it across the line, 17-0 Iowa at the half. I mean, I think I was more anxious than anything, not really nervous, um, just, just excited to get out there and finally play. Same score heading into the fourth, NIU finally gets on the board, Garrett Wolf from one yard out, that cut it to 17-7. The nation's leading rusher, though, held in check. 22 carries for just 66 yards. Eight minutes left, it gets interesting. Horvath hooks up with Britt Davis in the back of the end zone. 17-14, we've got ourselves a ball game. The black and gold, they'll respond. Under four to play, fourth and four from the Husky 10. The Hawks are going for it. Christensen finds Chandler. He's going to get popped at the goal line, but he hangs on. Into the end zone he goes. 24-14, Iowa on top, and that would seal it. Christensen gets his first win as an Iowa starter, and Iowa takes down Northern Illinois 24 to 14. That's something I've been dreaming about my whole life. I think, uh, you know, that's that's something a lot of little kids dream about, and not a lot of guys get the opportunity to do. So we're, we're thrilled to get the win. Uh, was it a perfect game? Hardly. You know, we uh, uh, we all realize that. Uh, we, we squandered some opportunities. Uh, part of that was our doing. Part of that was uh, Northern Illinois. And, uh, uh, you know, the good news is right now we have a lot, a lot of things we can feel like we can improve upon. It wasn't pretty, but the Hawks get it done at home today. 24-14 over Northern Illinois, ending their two-game losing streak. The win makes Iowa 6-3 and three on the year and bowl eligible. 